it's maybe good to take a step back to understand what we are talking about. What are these co-productions? So uh, I will try to uh, get you really inspired. I needed some help for inspiration. Uh, I'm not sure I managed that. So I, I looked a bit around and thought that Louis Armstrong could lead us into the topic here. He used to sing, there is lots of things that you can do alone. You can get into debt on your own, spend a lot, go to pot on your own, but it takes two to tango. Why am I saying this? Because you know, tango is an Argentinian dance and there are also uh, many forefathers to these dances and uh, just to mention some of them, we have the German Vals, the Czech Polka, Polish Mazurka, we go to Habanera in Spain and the Argentinian Milonga. So there is also some cultural diversity here. Uh, and if you've ever tried to dance tango, which I actually have, uh, you will also have experience that is quite complicated to, to dance. So that's why I need another help. And uh, here I go on to Jorge Luis Borges, and he said that tango is a direct expression of something that poets have often tried to state in words, the belief that a fight might be a celebration. Now, co-productions, they are uh, a bit similar to tango dancing, and I will uh, see if you might agree with this uh, statement. Because the results, they might be worth a celebration, but to obtain these results is not obvious. This might require some fighting spirit, and also flair of cultural diversity. So, what is a co-production? First of all, it is, uh, this doesn't work very well. I don't know where I have to push that. <laughs> it is, first of all, an adventure, a joint adventure, which is um, the, the thing, the reason why we need to take a look at the rules and to um, go and see what are the reasons legally that make people want to choose a co-production. We have seen a lot of figures about traveling, about exports, earning, um, but there are some uh, more nitty-gritty reasons that might sometimes explain why co-producing can be an advantage. First of all, just to have a common definition and be on the same page, it's clear a co-production is when we have an audiovisual work which is produced by more than one producer. That's easy. Uh, in this room today, we will talk about international co-productions, which means that we are talking about co-productions where the co-producers come from different countries. This can take different legal forms, I will, I will spare you the details there. But what is very important is that each co-producer has to co-own. There must be some rights in there. It's not enough just to put in money and to finance a work. This would not give the status of a co-producer and would not therefore help uh, to achieve the main goal, which is to qualify the work as national. This leads, you, this leads us to a question, what is an official co-production? Because you can co-produce without being officially nationally qualified. And this is almost useless when it comes to acquiring funds. So when we talk about it in legal terms, there might be two options. There might be a co-production agreement, bilateral or multilateral. Or there might be a co-production ruled by the Council of Europe Convention on Cinematographic Co-Production. In both cases, the works will be considered as national in all the countries involved. And that is what makes this very interesting, because they can travel as national, with a national passport, in more than one country. And this uh, can happen when there are agreements. These are international agreements like the uh, French-Italian one from 1949, but there are many, many more out there. Many countries have signed bilateral and multilateral agreements, in order to make the works acquired the national status. And all these agreements, they list certain requirements uh, that have to be fulfilled. They might be financial, artistic, technical, which have to be respected in order to uh, be considered as national. And not only, they must also be approved by the national authorities. So it's not just that you go ahead and start co-producing. And these might be ministries of cultures or national film agencies. But that's not all. I mentioned there is also a Council of Europe convention, and um, I will um, bring a little bit more of detail on, on this side. 
because it's a bit more complicated as a tool. First of all, it is an international treaty. This means that there must be signatories and parties. Um, what is important is that there must be at least two states that have signed the uh, convention, and there must not be any bilateral agreement between the two. There cannot be any contrast between the tools, which means that if there is a bilateral agreement, this would prevail on the convention as long as it they doesn't collide with each other. If there is a multilateral agreement between the countries, then it's the Council of Europe Convention that overrides. So it's also useful to have a lawyer with you when you start discussing about contracts to see which are the rules that apply. And which are the cases that it applies to? This is uh, quite uh, also important to, uh, to, to know. There are three cases. First one, there are three parties that are signatories. Easy. Second case, on top of these three parties, you have also one or more producers that come from non-signatories. In this case, their amount of co-ownership must not exceed 30%, otherwise the whole picture collapses. Third case, two parties to the convention without any bilateral agreement. That was the first case where we saw. Because if there is a bilateral agreement, this will prevail. So, again, the lawyer is good to have, also because when we take a look at the money, it's not just that you put the amount of money that you want. It depends on which cases. There, might, there are some specific rules as to the minimum and the maximum amount, and this depends on the cases. You see two different blocks there. In case of multilateral co-productions, you must put at least 5%, but not more than 80% and we are talking about the total production costs of the work. And in the case of the bilateral ones, these numbers are slightly adjusted, so not less than 10 and not more than 19. And of course, you must also guarantee joint ownership of the property rights, because this is all what it is about, that you have the rights and that you can legitimately sit at the negotiation table, which would not be the case for those who uh, only contributed financially and then maybe ask for the money rightfully back afterward. Uh, there are also some more obligations which uh, concerns the personnel. Uh, so there must be uh, special grants to uh, travel permits, uh, residence for all the technical and artistic people who participate. Uh, there must also be uh, grants to the uh, import, export for, of equipment that are in, necessary for the production and the distribution and there must also be a competent authority design. So the framework is a bit more complex. Uh, what we saw, what I started with was that the main reason for doing all this in this very complicated and a bit nitty gritty, I'm aware, I try to do it as light as possible, is that the purpose is to be national. But, uh, and therefore to be eligible for national funding. Then you can knock on the door, you have your passport for sitting at the table. But there are also other reasons. It can be financial ones, you can pool resources more easily. Uh, artistic ones, you uh, collaborate with artists from different backgrounds, and this contributes, of course, to the diversity in terms of culture. Uh, you can more easily access more markets. Uh, each producer would assumably know their country best, and it's also easier maybe to obtain pre-sales and local investments, and the work gets more easily distributed in each of the, of the countries. But I guess there are also some disadvantages, and this the panel will probably also get into. More work, more organization. There are distances, different languages, administrative structures, obligations. Here we are not talking about harmonized legislation according to EU rules, but we are talking about contracts, we are talking about international agreements, so the amount of variety and degrees of differences maybe also even cultural, it might not be easy to uh, talk to everyone, uh, might also play their role. But it's not enough, because you get the passport as national, but you can also use the passport of European, if one of these countries are EU countries. And this is also interesting, because then, with one shot, you satisfy another obligation, which comes from the AVMSD directive. We all know that uh, a few uh, weeks ago a compromise agreement was reached on the Audiovisual Media Services Directive. So it's interesting that these co-produced work, works can also be helpful in order to satisfy the quotas. So the 50% of the transmission time in case of broadcasting or the 20% of uh, presence in the catalogs. 
we will also see that this 20% is going to be turned into a 30 because that was the final uh, count uh, outcome of the of the revision process there are obligations for prominence there are obligations in for uh, targeting countries and in the little booklets that you are all probably sitting on uh, if you take it up you will see all the rules more detailed explained so i will not go into into this to come back to the start what i said it takes two to tango but it might also takes two to tango because it's not always easy there might be some entanglement issues, issues for fight. First one, take the lawyer with you. If you have a da badly drafted contract, well, this can be a problem. Any good co-production marriage can then end up in a very ugly divorce. Then there might be uh, quite some red tape, bureaucracy, functionaries to work with, and this can maybe also put the producer's patience at stake and on a test. And then the minority producers might not always have the same bargaining power when they decide to sit at the table. So that can also be an issue. The bigger fishes that might eat up the smaller ones, and I will just mention them here so that the panel can uh, discuss it further. There might also be further entanglement issues. We have not mentioned it before, but I dare to say it. There might be an elephant in this room. This one. Brexit. I will not speak about it. I leave it here and I thank you very much.